<laughs> Welcome to the block party. My name is Seth Kushner. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. You might know him from his time with the Kraken, now back with the Lightning, ABB, Alex Barre Boulay. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Thank you. All right. I just want to know, first thing, ABB, BB, what do the guys call you? I know a lot of people probably want to know your nickname. Last year, I had Ross Colton on right when he got called up. He told me people call him Ross the Boss. Now, I think people call him Roscoe. I don't, I don't know what his name is, but do you have a nickname that the people can start calling you for short yeah it's pretty much bb bb yeah okay does abb work or i should just drop the a yeah i should drop the a nobody calls me abb okay <laughs> I, I was doing that i'm gonna stop doing that immediately so uh, i'm glad uh, anything going on lately in your world man uh you know anything going on the last month or so uh well a quick trip to seattle <laughs> <laughs> all right talk talk to me about um, you know, going through the summer, everybody, well, people were worried that any body on the Lightning could get claimed by Seattle, whether it was the rights. I know people were worried your name was brought up. Uh, we all thought a lock, you know, to start the season with the Lightning, you know, all, all the big fans. So what was the conversation like when they said they had to put you on waivers and they were going to hope that you made it back to them when I think everybody knew that there was no chance of that? You know, I got when I got pulled in the office, you know, kind of new you know whenever you get put in the office uh, during training camp it's never good news you know especially after practice so uh you know obviously i was disappointed you know wanted to stay here but obviously didn't want to go back to the minors i was hoping for for a second chance in the nhl and um you know i was about i was in syracuse actually and then i was about to having a tee off with uh, daniel walka charles Houdon, and taylor radish brother <laughs> there you go when i got a call from julian saying um fortunately fortunately we, we just lost you to seattle and Ron Francis called me, and I had to rush back to the hotel and try to make it to my flight. And uh, you know, met the team in Vegas, and you know, stayed there for two weeks. <laughs> so, what was it when Ron Francis called you? What did he say? Because uh, I mean, it seems I can't believe you were only there for a couple weeks. I can't believe they let you go. Just to be honest with you, <laughs> you know, you're over. They they they're an expansion team. They let you go. You come back here. You're playing with the top power player. You're playing with you know some of the best guys in the world. So, what did he say? Did he say? What our plans, what his plans were for you or anything like that? Uh, not really. Uh, I think they had a lot of guys on COVID protocol that I think ended up being false positive. So, you know, as soon as uh, I got there, the whole team was healthy and, you know, ready to go. So, uh, you know, Marcus Johansson broke his toes or whatever in the first game. So I think that's why I got in and, you know, did two games, went actually pretty good and, you know, kind of felt like, when everybody was healthy that I wasn't going to stay there for a while because, you know, wasn't playing or anything. And so, I mean, it was fine. I had a good time over there, uh, you know, obviously seeing back, seeing Gordo back. And uh, how is he, by the way? He's doing great. You know, a lot of minutes for him over there. You know, he's a great leader over there. I think it's good. Or it's bad for us that he got picked up, but obviously really good for them. Did you feel like, was it great to see Yanni again? Because I interviewed Yanni a couple of times and he just seems like that the happiest guy ever. And I was, I was hurt actually as a grown man to see him leave. I just want to make sure he's happy. I know that he's wearing the A now, which is great for him. He, he always deserved that. So I just wanted to make sure Yanni was happy. Yeah, he's happy. I think, I think he has, he's had a, he has a more offensive role right now over there. You know, here it's tough to have an offensive role when, you know, we have the top six that we have. So uh, he's having big minutes over there. He's playing really well, score goals. So I think he's happy. Did you think there was any chance you'd make it back here after after Seattle? No, I I was ready to move on. You know, obviously wanted to stay here. You know, it's a great place to play, and you know the fans and everything. But I didn't think I was coming back. Uh, two weeks later, you know, I was like, well, maybe in a month if I get waived again or, or something like that. But I was really happy as soon as I found out I was on the waivers again. I texted my agent. I was like, make sure I go back to Tampa because that's where that's where I want to go. Uh, you know, being in a comfortable environment, knowing everybody, uh, it's a lot easier to start over again. Does anything change even when you're just gone for two weeks and you come back? Do you feel like you missed anything or does it you feel like you just jump right back into where you have been for the last couple of years? Aside the ring ceremony, I didn't miss. Uh, oh, did you miss that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you about Fallout yeah. Boy. I missed it by a day. Oh, so, my God. Yeah, it was fine, though. Like when I came back, it was honestly like I never left You because know, I was gone for so little that when I came back, it was like. I was hurt for two weeks, and I came back, and that's it. So it was really fun coming back. You know, guys made a couple jokes, and uh, <laughs> what, what were the jokes? Who made the best jokes? Who well, gave you the best singers? You know, when first you got thing, I, I came in, Vaz, he called me a Kraken legend. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I don't remember who told me. that I was, like, top 25 in franchise history, most game played. <laughs> That is good. What was it like out there? I read I read a quote, I think it was from Joe Smith when he talked to you, that you just said, you know, 
Seattle's doing something different. Tampa's doing something different. What, just being out there for two weeks and all the buzz was about Seattle this year, you know, starting. So what what is going on out there? I mean, how are they embracing hockey and what's going on? Well, are they trying to win the Stanley Cup? Uh, obviously, every team is trying to win the Stanley Cup, but, you know, it's as different as here when you have the core group coming back year after year. It's the same guys. They, they've been winning together, and every year they know they have a shot at it over there. It's a brand new group of player. Um, they have great players. But, you know, obviously, it's going to take a little bit of time for them to, you know, gel together. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be part of the first win, and it was pretty cool. It was like we just ra- win a round playoff, like, it was cool in the room after the game. It was, like, more emotional than just a regular win. Um, but, you know, I think they're working hard. They're, they're getting adjusted to the new system. You know, everybody's kind of never played the system that the coach wanted them to play. And um, I think they're doing a great job right now. But, you know, obviously uh, they, they have to gel as a team. Did Seattle fly you out in a private jet when they claimed you? What's that pro- – because I, I, when I talked to Ross Colton last year – he told me when you guys got called up together, you got the private jet treatment. So yeah, I think that was just because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually, usually it's just a regular plane, but you know, I think they have to fly you in first class or something like that. So it was cool. What yeah. was so? What was it like doing when you're on the private jet with with Ross? What, I mean, that's got to be. Yeah, we we had a good time in the in the jet. We were like, "What's going on? Why are we here?" Like it's <laughs> it was special, but uh, then it started shaking because you no. Know, Jets are pretty small planes, so it started shaking. We're like, oh, we don't, not sure we we're liking this as much is, as we did in the beginning. But is, is that the last time that you're on a private jet? Second call up. Okay. Yeah, second call with Mitchell Stevens. Uh, I was on the private jet to Nashville, and this one was really bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> are you just saying that so people like me aren't jealous of the private jet? Are you trying to tell uh, us it's not a great experience? No, I'd rather fly a commercial now than <laughs> PJ because it's such a small plane that you feel everything, and you look at the pilot, they're just chilling like it's normal and you're thinking am i gonna see the ground ever again yeah <laughs> yeah you don't want that you no. don't want that so i didn't know that you missed the ring ceremony i was gonna ask what that was like to have fallout boy play right in front of you so how did you get your ring oh uh, just after the first game i got back uh, i think we had just played colorado obviously didn't play that game me and uh freddie cleason i think uh joined pull us out in the office and he was like here you go congrats guys thank you for everything last year and it was, it was a cool moment that was, it was, oh, so it's just like, hey, come get your ring. It's not like, I thought it was like a big ceremony. Where well, they, no, because, you know, it was just after a game, and we missed the ring ceremony, so we kind of had to just get it like that, but it was fine. Wow, that's incredible. So um, you made it back to Tampa. Your wife is pregnant, right? Yep. So how, how far along is she? She's due February. So, February, yeah. Right. So who's giving you the best dad advice on the team? <laughs> is or is anybody giving? I mean, because I feel like whenever somebody has kids, I mean, people want to give it, give you the advice right away. Not really, because I think everybody is just hearing advice all over the place, and you don't know till the baby's here, right? So yeah. you you kind of make your own judgment of what's wrong, what's right, and nobody really, you know, talked to me. Right? Just the only thing I heard was like, get some sleep. Like, enjoy your sleep right now. <laughs> yeah, you'll be okay. I think, yeah. how's, how's Pat Maroon doing now? I know he just had a daughter. I think he scored, like, the night he came yeah. back from that, so. I think he's doing great. You know, it's not his first time around, so that's good. You know, he's used to it now, and, um, you know, I'm excited. Can't wait to have to see it. See the baby. Tell me about the parade from your perspective this year. What Just, you know, take me through it from, you know, the good times on the boat to when all hell broke loose with the storm in the afternoon. Yeah, that was cool. I was with uh, David Savar. And uh, Michelini last year, so that was really nice, you know, being there and, you know, living the moment. You know, you've heard about it from the year before, but it's crazy the amount of people that showed up to just see you on the boat. Like, it's crazy. I think probably the best fan in the league to do that because it was wild, you know, the sun being down on you, but you don't feel it because you're just enjoying it. And, you know, when we got to the, um, the, the stage or whatever, that was it started raining, but it's like nothing happened. We just kept going, and it was really fun. Wow, that wasn't the way. We were there to try to, like, film some stuff, and we had to totally run away and hide all of our equipment. I'm glad that you guys had fun. So we thought there might be another parade, but they canceled it after that yeah. one. I, I mean, they kind of had to. Like, I, mean, I, I was ready for the big boy concert, so, I mean, that's yeah. what I, I wanted that to happen. Yeah. So with the Stanley Cup, and I talked to Stammer about this um, at the beginning of last season when he was hurt during their run, and – when they were about to win, you know, got dressed. You have to decide when you're going to go out there. It was a very close game. For this one, when you're back there with, like, Killer and all the guys, what was the conversation like of, like, when when do we get ready? When do we feel good enough to, to start lacing them up and going out there? I mean, last year in the playoff, whenever we had the lead in the third, 
we didn't lose it much. So as soon as we got the lead, game five against Montreal, we we actually came down with like 15 minutes left, which is a lot of time. Yeah, and we were just watching the game in in the in the little black case room, and uh, we we're just waiting for it to happen. And when it happened, we just we jumped on the ice, and it was crazy. Were you wait? Was Killer the kind of leading the way with that whole situation? Yeah, it was. It was you know uh, leading the way, telling us you know if if we can go right now or have to wait. And then as soon as we heard the buzzer, like. Didn't matter what Killer said. Everybody was going. <laughs> did you have your phone with you, right? Did you go out there yeah. with your phone? Yeah, I brought my phone. You know, I had the chance to, you know, bring it. So I was like, why not? Took some cool videos. Yeah, no, that, that's great. I've talked to a lot of the guys, and then they were like, uh, Ross Colton, he told me that he brought it. He actually had a cell phone in his pocket for the third period. He was just lying, but I had no idea because those guys had their phones, like, immediately when they were out there. So if Killer was coordinating everything, I could see he would want to make sure that everybody did have their cameras. Yeah, not everybody had it, actually, like. Uh, me and Daniel Walcott, Daniel Walcott actually put it in his pants. He had like a little pocket to put it in, so I, I gave it to him and he gave it back to me as soon as we had the ice. So how has this season going for you? How has the number change been going? Were you happy to, to shed the number 60? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I feel like 60 was a call-up number. <laughs> you know, you're a call-up if you're wearing 60 unless you're Jose Teodoro from back in the day. So, uh, you know, 12 is always my number Okay. since I've been in Syracuse. So, Do you have any... Do you have your Kraken jersey? Do you have any Kraken stuff? Did they take it from you when you left? What do you have? I think I have a T-shirt, maybe. T-shirt? No, no no jersey? No, I don't intend to wearing a T-shirt anyway. So. No. Okay. <laughs> hey, all right, let me see. All right, so here's what I want to do. So I'm going to offer you. I feel like we're, we're friends here, right? So this is very rare. This is my high school football jersey. As you can see, number 60, <laughs> okay? Number 60. So I'm willing, I'm trying to trade this for whatever Kraken stuff you have. I feel like whatever Kraken stuff you have, it's a collector's item. It's one of one. And I'm willing to part with this jersey, <laughs> offensive line, for your old Kraken stuff. Are you will, Are you willing to make sure. that deal? Let's make it happen. There we go. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can just give it to Breezer, and then we'll take care of it. So um, let's see. Um, let's see. How do you get on waivers of the Game 5 locker room? Man, I think we've covered it all so far. Sounds good. Is there, there was one thing I wanted to know, because I feel like Joe Smith, he gets the stories on everybody when he sits down. Is there anything that you have never told anybody before that we can get some breaking news here on the block party? Anything going on lately that we should know about just so I can get a scoop on Joe Smith? <laughs> not really, honestly. You know, if there's a scoop, Joe's probably the first guy to know. So <laughs> I don't have nothing for you right now. Okay. So uh, just one more thing. So how, how's the locker room this year now that, you know, some of the guys are gone. We talked about Yanni. There's new guys in there. We're counting on a lot of the younger guys. Guys, you've been around, you know, forever since Syracuse what's the team like this year compared to last year I think it's pretty much you know we obviously lost uh, a great line and and you know Gordo's line and Colsey with Goody even um Tyre Johnson it's always hard when you lose guys like that but at the same time I think for it was it created opportunity for guys you know like me myself Taylor Radish Boris Kachuk um you know we we grew up together in Syracuse so it's nice to all be here right now together and makes it a little easier, you know, you know, on the plane, on the road, you know, you know who you're going to eat with. And um, it, I think it makes it a lot easier. You know, last year was first time for me here. And when I came in with Ross, we were kind of lost, didn't know like where to go. So it's nice to have someone, some faces, you know, were you, so you stayed in a hotel all last year, right? Yeah. Are you out of a hotel? And then you were in a hotel and with the, with Seattle. Yeah. Are you in a hotel now? Or are you, yeah. You're still in the hotel? Yeah, I'm still in the hotel right oh, now. Oh, no. What's going on? I know it's a nice hotel. Where, and Ross said, hey, you don't have to make your own bed yeah. there. So are there plans to get out of the hotel or you're loving it? I mean, I like it, but it's not my call. So uh, whenever they, whatever they're going to tell me, I'm going to move out or I'm going to stay in. It doesn't matter. It's crazy. See, people don't know, like, the life of an NHL player. is like, can I move out of the hotel? Who knows? So, yeah. BB, thank you very much. I'm glad we could work out the nickname. I am going to really give you this, you know, so <laughs> you can you can hang it up. Give it to your new baby. Thank you very much, man. Glad you're back with the team, and I'm glad Vazzy did recognize you're a Kraken legend. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.